Since we can identify a quadratic form with a symmetric matrix, we're just going to define definiteness in terms of matrices themselves. So we shall say that the matrix corresponding to uh, quadratic forms, or to a quadratic form, uh, are definite, semi-definite, or indefinite. So suppose A is an n by n symmetric matrix. So it's a square matrix and uh, A transpose is equal to A. Uh, then we say then A is A positive definite and the corresponding quadratic form uh, if is also positive definite, xt x is greater than zero, strictly greater than zero for all x not equal to zero. B positive semi definite if So semi-definiteness relaxes the strict inequality uh, for all x not equal to zero. C, we say negative definite if x transpose a x is less than zero strictly for all x not equal to zero. D, it's negative semi-definite if x transpose a x is less than or equal to zero for all x not equal to zero. And E, we say it's indefinite indefinite uh, if x transpose a x is greater than zero for some x in r n and less than zero for some others. So the positive definite case corresponds to a unique global minimum of the corresponding quadratic form. Positive semi-definite says there is a global minimum, but it's not unique necessarily. Negative definite says there's a unique global maximum. Negative semi-definite, and of course all these are at zero. You know that they're at zero. Um, there's at least one at zero, of course. Negative semi-definite. Uh, means that there's a global maximum, but it's not necessarily unique, and indefinite says that you don't have any sort of guarantees like that. Uh, so definiteness, so this is these are global properties, but remember that we can do Taylor expansions of a one-dimensional function, and when we do a Taylor expansion of a one-dimensional function, or a Taylor approximation, We have that f of x is equal to uh, f of x naught plus f prime of x naught times x minus x naught, and this is a approximation, uh, plus one half f double prime at x naught delta x 
square, uh, where of course this, this guy is delta x, or change in x. Well, if we know, uh, if we know a, so basically this is a quadratic approximation to a function, right? So you have a function f of x, and it looks maybe like this thing. And we want to characterize maxima, say, for a function like this. And what we do is we, we say, okay, well, uh, at a maxima, we have a critical point. So the derivative vanishes. So I have a zero there. And so I'm really well approximated by, locally, of course, by a second order function, which is a quadratic. And so the, the fit of a function, right, we fit the approximation like this. And the behavior of the second derivative there gives me information about whether that's a local min, a local max, or if I don't know what's going on, right? Um, and so this, you can think about it, f double prime of x naught is a one by one matrix, right? So we can say, well, is this positive definite matrix or semi-definite? Of course it's symmetric, it's one by one, it's already symmetric, right? Well, it's a, it's a positive, if it's positive, then it's positive definite, right? If it's negative, then it's negative definite. And we have corresponding minima or maxima situation when that occurs. Uh, and so the whole point of definiteness is to characterize second order local behavior of a function. So let me write that down. So def definiteness helps us characterize second order, that is a quadratic approximations, local behavior of a function. And a lot of the time this is sufficient to tell us if there is a local maximum or a minimum or if we have no information. Um, and in order to actually move this from one dimension into higher dimension, we have to have what's known as the Hessian. So the matrix of second order partial derivatives right, so I have a function real valued, and I'll say h of f is equal to, it's this matrix where I have d squared f over dx1 squared, so I take the partial of f with respect to x1 twice, d squared f dx1 dx2, this means I differentiate f with respect to x2, and then I differentiate the resulting function with respect to x1. Right, these are all one-dimensional functions, so this still makes sense. And this goes all the way up to d squared f dx1 dxn. Uh, the next entry here is going to be d squared f dx1 dx2. So this should actually correspond to differentiating with respect to x1 first and then x2, but it turns out that these two things are equal in almost all cases of interest. Um, so we just will say that these are roughly the same thing. Um, and this is, a, I believe, Young's theorem that says that, but we, we don't actually need to know the proof of it to apply it. And this will be d squared f dx2 dxn. Yeah. Uh, so this guy, um, because of that, because of that, the fact that these do swap, this guy is a symmetric matrix, and so it corresponds to a quadratic form. Right? These guys are going to be d squared f dx1 dxn and d squared f or dx2 dxn. Uh, and we call this guy the Hessian.
this is the Hessian, and this can be used to construct a second order approximation to a C2 function. So C1 means I have continuous first order partial derivatives. C2 just means I have that all these partial derivatives are continuous. Well, we have that uh, for a general function, if x is nearby x0, then a good approximation is going to be f of x0 plus the gradient of f at x0 dotted with x minus x0. No, actually, actually, this should just be at x, right? So, let's get rid of this guy here. Dot that guy with x. Plus, one half, x transpose the Hessian of f at x0, x. So that's a good uh, approximation locally. Um, and so this is, this is kind of reminiscent, right? So this will be a matrix now, so this is a matrix product. This is reminiscent of our uh, Taylor expansion, and in fact it's basically an n-dimensional Taylor expansion, right? So of course, uh, del f x not equal to zero uh, vanishes uh, if uh, x not is a critical point and we'll, we'll learn more about that that behavior later uh, and h f x not tells us Uh, what kind of extrema? Right, so if uh, H F X naught is positive definite, then we call it a local maximum, uh, local minimum. Right, because uh, because this is the approximation. If this vanishes, then I just have a quadratic function. Right, um, if it's negative definite, we have a local max. Uh, indefinite, uh, we don't know. It's a it's most likely a saddle point. So this is why the characterization uh, or the notion of definiteness is so important. It helps us characterize exactly the behavior of optimal points or extrema for a given function. Just like the second derivative gave us information about optimal points for functions of one variable.